Hey y'all, welcome back to another What's For Dinner. If you're new here, welcome. I post another What's For Dinner video every Monday on my channel, so be sure that you subscribe so you don't miss anything from me. I'm a full-time working mom of three kiddos, so I like to bring super easy meal ideas over here on this channel. So if you're into that, definitely subscribe. If you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up. That helps out my channel more than you guys know. So please go ahead and do that before we get into the meals. So for this first meal, I have a no peak chicken, and this is the first time that I've ever made this, but it was really, really good. So I started by spraying the bottom of my baking dish with some avocado oil, and then I had two boxes of Uncle Ben's dirty rice, and I just threw those into the bottom of the baking dish, and then I threw in a can of cream of chicken and a can of cream of celery. And believe it or not, this is the first time that I've actually used cream of celery. And I think I like it more than the cream of mushroom, but I threw those in to the baking dish. And then I took a can and a half of water and I threw that into the bottom of the baking dish. I would say that was about a cup and a half. And then I took some garlic powder and just seasoned that up a little bit. And then I also took some black pepper and threw some black pepper in there. No specific measurements. You guys just go by taste. If you don't like garlic powder, then don't add it in. If you do, then add it in. Um, but then I started to whisk this together and I remembered that I needed one more thing and I needed to add in one of the packets of the dirty rice mixture. Don't add both, only add one. I was a little bit worried that this wasn't gonna be flavorful enough because I didn't add in both, but that's what the recipe calls for. And this seasoning was so good. I'll definitely be able to use the other seasoning in something else. So only add in one of those Uncle Ben's dirty rice seasonings, whisk that up really well. And then you're going to need to lay down your chicken breast on top of all of this yummy mixture. You guys, this was so good. I can't even tell y'all how good this was. So go ahead and lay down your chicken breast. I only used four. The recipe actually calls for five, but you guys, that that is so much chicken. Like unless I was having people over, there's no way that my family could eat five huge chicken breasts. It's just not, not possible. Then what you're gonna wanna do is take a Lipton soup, onion soup mix packet and go ahead and just Sprinkle that over the top of your chicken. And the recipe actually called for one and a half of these Limpton soup mixes, but I didn't, um, I only ended up using one because I didn't want to open another one and have like half of it open. So I just use one. And then what you're going to want to do is take some aluminum foil, seal your dish up really well, and then pop this into the oven on 350 for an hour and 45 minutes and do not peek at this chicken. You don't want to open your oven at all. You just want to let it go. And for a side with this chicken, I made some zucchini. And what I did is I took about a half a pound of bacon and I sliced those into like one inch pieces, took about a quarter of an onion chopped. And then I just cooked this bacon and this onion really well before I threw in my zucchini because I just, you know, I like my bacon to get a little bit crispy. And if you cook the, if you throw in your zucchini before you put in your bacon, then you're going to have a problem. So I realized that this pan was not going to be big enough for all of the zucchini and squash that I chopped up. So I kind of just transferred it and you guys look how easy <laughs> that bacon came out of that pan. I love those pans. They're my green pans and I'll link them down below so you guys can take a look at them. But I just, I'm so in love with those pans. They're nonstick and they're just the best pans that I've ever had. But I had to um, switch over to this pan and I threw in two zucchini and two squash um, chopped up. And I like to chop ours into like half moon size. You can, you know, chop them however your family likes. But for the seasonings on this one, I used some fajita seasoning. I just sprinkled a little bit of that over the zucchini. And then I also used some cayenne pepper. And um, you guys, this gave it a little bit of spice, but I have to say, it was absolutely delicious. My oldest son is really the only one that eats the zucchini and the squash, so he can stand the heat. 
if my little ones were eating it, obviously I wouldn't make the, or put in the spicy pepper, but you guys, that um, cayenne pepper made these vegetables. They were so, so good and they were a great compliment to this no peak chicken. So once your um, chicken has been in the oven for an hour and 45 minutes, go ahead and pull it out, let it rest for about five, and then you can take your aluminum foil off at that point. You guys, I this was so good. The rice was actually my favorite part of this chicken. Um, it was just so delicious. It was so creamy. It was cooked perfectly. The flavors were just perfect. So thank you to Shauna over at Ms. Dickinson because she's actually the one um, that introduced this recipe to me. And this is definitely going on my menu again with this side. So definitely give this a shot if you haven't tried this. It's not one of those meals that you can just throw together after a long work day, but if you're off one day and it's a weekend, then I would definitely recommend that one. So the next night, Taco Tuesday, you guys, we were down with the flu. My two youngest ended up getting the flu and oh my gosh, I just needed something easy to throw together. So I did tacos and it's just ground beef with some taco seasoning. And then I cook my tortillas on the stove before I serve them. My husband and I actually had a taco salad. And um, what I did is I just cut up some romaine lettuce, put some of that taco meat on there with some red onions and some crushed up chips. And then my little ones had the tacos. Um, and then I always like to make a plate of fixins. So I'll usually throw some cheese, some lime, some salsa, sour cream, cilantro, of course, lettuce, and some onions on there. And they can kind of just fix their tacos the way that they want. And you know, everybody's happy because everybody has their taco the way that they want it. The next night I made spaghetti and I like to start my spaghetti with onions and mushrooms. And believe it or not, my kiddos will eat the mushrooms when I put it in my spaghetti. And that is a vegetable that my kiddos will not normally eat. So if I have them in my pantry, then I try to put them or in my refrigerator or I would try to put them in my spaghetti. So I threw in, um, I cooked these I cooked these mushrooms and onions down real well, and then I threw in about a tablespoon of garlic, um, just chopped up garlic, and then I took a pound of ground beef, and I threw that in with the onions and the mushrooms, and I just browned that meat really well. And I'm showing you guys how I make my spaghetti because it's been a good while. Obviously, if your family doesn't like mushrooms, then you can definitely leave out the mushrooms, but I went ahead and I ground up that meat really well, and then I added in a couple of seasonings. So I like to add in garlic powder, of course, to spaghetti, you have to have garlic powder, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and then I went ahead and just mixed that in, and then I added in my sauce. So for the sauce, what you're gonna wanna add in is a can of Hunt's, just this pasta sauce. This is just the garlic and herb. Um, this is the big can, and then also a can of petite diced tomatoes. Don't know what happened to the footage of me dumping that in, but apparently it's not here. So um, I like to add in, of course, some Italian seasoning to my spaghetti sauce, and I like to add in a generous amount of that because it gives it a great flavor. And I only add in a little bit of salt because we can always salt it at the end. I don't like my spaghetti sauce to be very salty. So I like to keep that for the end. But then you're gonna wanna, I like to add a little bit of sugar. I usually add about a tablespoon of sugar to my spaghetti as well. Y'all let me know down in the description box if y'all add sugar to your spaghetti because I think uh, most people do and I just started doing it and it just makes the spaghetti so good. So just go ahead and simmer this cover it, simmer it while you are cooking your noodles. We like to use the angel hair pasta and I serve this with some garlic bread, a side salad with some ranch and then the spaghetti and I put some Parmesan cheese on top of that. All right, y'all ended up getting 
cold in Texas again, so I made some chili. This was the perfect night for chili. It was cold and it was rainy. It was so good. So I sprayed the bottom of my crock pot with some avocado oil, and then I took three pounds of cooked ground beef and threw that into the bottom of my crock pot. Took about a quarter of an onion, chopped that up, threw that in there, took some tomato sauce, and I threw that in there as well. I had two cans of diced tomatoes. One was petite and one was just regular diced. Um, no particular reason, just because that's what I had in my pantry. So that's what worked. I had two cups of beef broth, threw that in there. And then I also had two cans of chili beans. One was pinto and one was kidney. If you don't like chili beans, then you can totally omit this step or you can just use either one or the other. But I definitely recommend that you get chili beans instead of just regular old beans. For your seasonings, what you're gonna wanna use is about three tablespoons of chili powder and two teaspoons of cumin. And you guys, I will leave all of the recipes and the measurements and everything down in the description box in case you're looking for them. I know that I'm running through this very quickly, but I just shared this recipe not too long ago on my channel. So I um, will definitely leave everything down in the description box because you guys, this is one of my favorite chilies. I know it's a crock pot chili, but it's so good. Go ahead and add in one teaspoon of oregano and then crumble up a beef bouillon cube. I like the Knorr brand and put that in the crock pot as well. And this definitely gives it a little bit more flavor than what the original recipe actually called for. I have tweaked this and I feel like it is almost perfect. So go ahead and stir in all of those spices, mix up the beans and get this blended in really well and you can go ahead and throw your lid on. I cooked this on low for 10 hours while I was at work. It was still going when I got home, and you guys, this was so good. Here's this chili all plated up. I freshly grated some cheddar cheese, had some sour cream below that. And then of course we're in the South, so we always eat cornbread with our chili. This was so delicious. It's either like cornbread or saltines. Let me know what y'all eat with your chili down in the uh, comment section. I'm really curious to know. But the last meal that I have for you guys is a repurpose of this chili. So what I did is I made some chili cheese dogs, this is actually my son's chili cheese dog. He likes ketchup, relish, cheese, and chili on his hot dog. So that is gonna do it for this video. I hope y'all enjoyed. If you did, like I said, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.